Hello. Hopefully everybody's having fun. So today I'm going to be talking about Max's engine performance. Max makes everything super, super fast. And I don't have to tell you that. You saw that in the keynote. It gives you, Max gives you huge compute multipliers up to 5x, 2x to 5x in many, many cases. And that works across hardware architectures. So as the figure showed, ARM, Intel, and AMD are all represented there. And it works from large models to small models. Let's dig into that for a little bit. So you saw a bunch of results from large models. So if we dig down deep into Llama 2, 7 billion parameters, we see huge compute multipliers. 2x on Intel, 1.6x on uh, ARM, and so on. That means you save a lot of money in the process. Now, you might say, oh, these Llama models are not super optimized. So let's look at hyper-optimized models, like MLperf models. Those are where frameworks compete in. When you see like TensorFlow versus PyTorch and so on, and hardware versus hardware, they're using MLperf models. And one of the most heavily optimized models is the ResNet 50 model. So here, we're getting 3.6x improvement on ARM Graviton systems. And in many other cases, 2x speedups. Now these are kind of large, medium, Obviously, we want to look at baby models, tiny models, things that you see in embedded systems and so on. So how does Max work on that? And for those cases, we looked at customer model that's more for the embedded use case. And if we compare against XLA with full optimizations, we get up to 2.9x speed up on AMD. And Max does not just work on LLMs and CNNs works on other models. DLRM is a common recommender model that's very, very important in you know, ads and Facebook and other kind of use cases. We're getting massive speed up compared to Onyx runtime and TensorFlow for these recommender models. So this is like if I vary the model size and the hardware. What if I vary the data type? So you see like a proliferation of things like int8 and int4 and fp8 and so on. So let's dig into that. For quantized int8 model, if we take the, LL, you know, the Llama 2 model, we're 20 to 60% faster uh, over Onyx runtime. And here, this is kind of powered, we're kind of fully utilizing the uh, facilities that are available on the hardware. So for Intel, we're using VNNI instructions. For ARM, we're using the IA to MMM instructions. Those are, again, things that you, you know, those are kernels that are pre-built that you don't have to build them. But as Steven and Matthew showed, you know, if you have your own custom hardware or custom instruction set that you can exploit, that's available to you as well. One thing that we showed uh, in the keynote is the uh, stable diffusion using INT4. But here we're showing the performance of INT4 on Llama 2 we're getting massive speed up against, against Onyx runtime. So that's kind of like this sort of model, but there's more stuff that Max provides. One thing that Max embraces dynamicism. Now you might ask, where does this dynamicism come from? Well, when you're serving, you have different batch sizes. You know, Triton does auto batching and so on. When you're serving LLM models, you have different sequence lengths. As you kind of progress, your sequence lengths get bigger and bigger. You also have to serve different images. And Max gives you all this kind of performance improvements while maintaining dynamicism. Now, I've thrown a bunch of numbers together, but you might ask, how does it work? And for that, I want to invite Hongji, who's going to describe to you how exactly this works. Um, thank you, Abdul. I'm going to talk about how did Max get those amazing performance results? But first, let me mention that, so the AI pipeline actually goes beyond just the models, right? It also includes loading the data, pre-processing the data, post-processing the data. So the goal of Max here is not just to, not just to optimize the models, it's to, it's to optimize the entire AI pipeline end-to-end. -end. And to do that, we develop holistic optimizations. And by that, we mean in Max, the runtime, the compiler, and the kernels, 
They work together collaboratively. This is unlike existing systems where those components can actually be from different libraries, developed by different vendors with different strengths. They basically are like black boxes who don't talk to each other. But in Max, like the kernels, they are open boxes. The compiler can specialize the kernels, can optimize the kernels, and our runtime can schedule the kernels. Let's take a deeper look at the max runtime. So max runtime is fully asynchronous. That means it can allow you to maximize the parallelism between different ops and also within a single op. And it automatically manages the memory for you. That means your computation does not have to wait for the data transfer. And it also lifts some of the layout transformation to the initialization of the model. So that cost is removed from your inference time. And in later slides, I will have a concrete example to show how those works together. About the Max compiler, uh, the last talk have already given an amazing introduction for the compiler. Here, just a short recap. We could have a graph of complex kernels, and the Max compiler is able to fuse them into a single op, and this happens automatically. This will drastically improve your cache locality and reduce the memory traffic and improve the performance for you. Now about kernels, Abdul just mentioned that Max uh, has dynamism support. But you may be wondering, wouldn't that just hurt performance? For example, if now things are known at runtime, how would you optimize them? Well, in Max, we let the kernels to use as much information as possible. For example, we could specialize the kernels under static dimensions. Let's take convolution kernel as an example. Well, typically, in a lot of models, the convolution kernel, we already know the padding and the stress. There are known constants. That means we can infer the memory access pattern at compile time. This will allow us to generate optimized kernels with the optimal algorithm using the optimal layout and run that optimized kernel at runtime. Here is a simple benchmark. We are using some shapes from the ResNet50 models and benchmarked it on a Intel Skylake processor. You can see the blue bar shows the performance of the default convolution algorithm. And the green bar shows like there is 20 to 30% of improvement by specializing on the static dimensions and generate the optimal kernel. Now let's use an example to show how all the components collaborate together. Now in this single pipeline, we have a convolution kernel, which is using the default algorithm, followed by a bias, then a value activation function, than some normalization. Now the first thing, as the last slide shows, we could specialize on the static dimension. That will give us a fast convolution kernel. But this comes with some additional cost because the layout required by this fast kernel could be different than the layout of the default algorithm. So we need a gray box here to translate the layout. Next, the max runtime will kick in. It's going to lift this layout transformation into the initialization of your model. So this part of the cost is no longer part of your inference. And then the compiler will kick in. All the ops is automatically fused into a more performant fused op. Now if we compare them side by side, this is the optimization Max will give you. More importantly, all the kernels in Max are written in module. Now you may be wondering why is this important? Now to answer this, we need to take one step back and see how other frameworks develop their kernels. The state of the art uh, frameworks, it basically do whatever it takes to get performance. Well, so what does this mean? This means they will actually write their kernel in assembly. I mean, writing the kernel in assembly is a powerful way to give you performance on a specific architecture. But what if you write all your kernels in assembly? Like for an op as common as this matrix multiplication. By the way, so the add symbol here is like the Python way of um, note a matrix multiplication. So for this op, if you're written it in assembly, that means you have to implement the same algorithm multiple times on different architectures, using different instructions, and maybe even using a different assembly language. Well, we know this is obviously not ideal. Now, people have come up with various workarounds. For example, we can develop a C++ domain-specific language to generate assembly for you. I mean, this does simplify the code a little bit, but it's still not ideal, right? What about using a Python program 
to generate assembly for us. Well, this is still assembly. Now, what about using a Python program to generate a C++ code, and then the C++ code calls into the intrinsics? But then the intrinsic is still architecture specific, right? So this is just too complex. We need something simple. But then you may be wondering, OK, but there are existing libraries do this for us, right? Why not just use those libraries? They will handle all the low-level development for you. Well, that's true. But there is still a maintenance cost. Because if we switch to existing libraries, like they didn't solve the problem for you, but instead they are shifting the problem into the framework integration. Again, for the matrix multiplication, if now we are using different library on different architectures, then they could have different APIs. They could have different fusion supports or they could have different dependencies. Now it's your framework that have to deal with this inconsistency. This is where we need Mojo. This is where Mojo give us his superpower. Now, in Max, all the kernels for all the architectures are actually written in Mojo. This means like for matrix multiplication, for the same algorithm, you can adapt it to a new architecture with very minor code changes. It significantly reduces your development effort. And also, now Mojo unifies the API across different platforms. So that means you have the same API, you have the same Fusion support. This makes it much, much easier to integrate into a framework. Now let's take a deeper look to see how this works exactly. Now let's take the matrix multiplication as an example. Now if I have the good algorithm, I implement it, I want to support both AVX2 and AVX512. How do I do that? Let's think at the algorithm level. So what does this difference in architecture get reflected in the algorithm? It's actually just two things, right? The CMD size and the number of CMD registers you can use. So with Mojo, we can easily express this by adding two parameters to our matrix multiplication struct, right? What about the internal implementation? It doesn't have to change at all. You can have exact the same implementation for AVX2 and AVX512. This is how easy to support both. Now then you may be asking, what about a different architecture? What about an ARM CPU? That's very different than x86, right? Again, we can think at the algorithm level. So what does this difference in the architecture makes into the algorithm? Then the core difference is actually just one thing. It's how you can broadcast from a single value into a CMD register. And again, we can express this with Mojo by adding a parameter to our functions. Now you can add another function to take advantage of the more efficient broadcast with Neon. So this means to support the architecture is just very minor code changes in the same API and in the same high-level programming language. Now to enable all those features, we need to JIT our kernels. Because in this way, our kernel can use the target instruction on the target hardware and has the best performance. While JITing the kernels also give us another benefit, it simplifies our distributions, allows us to have a smaller distribution. Now this is why I like Mojo, because as a developer, I don't have to like develop at super low level. I don't have to maintain the assembly code. It allows me to be more productive. It allows me to focus on like what I'm interested at, like the algorithm level optimizations. But Max Engine is also much more beyond that. So we also have auto-tuning support, which means we can automatically tune our, turn, tune our kernel on the target hardware to generate the most optimized kernel for you. We also support custom ops, which means you can define your own op for your model, and this op will also get the fusion support from Max. And we also support multi-model uh, serving, which means we can tune our AI pipeline based on the system workload. Now we have seen how it works under the hood uh, of Max. Uh, let me hand it back to Abdul to bubble things up. Thank you. Yeah, so thanks, Hongji. So I want to talk how we have put all of this together. You know, there's a lot of, you know, interesting things under the hood, but let's look at how this all fits together again. And let's bubble up a little bit. <coughs> um, so in the keynote, we showed this uh, stable diffusion pipeline. 
we showed that it's a complicated pipeline, usually implemented in multiple languages, where the blue section is implemented in Python, the middle one is implemented, you know, usually by the frameworks and so on, and the kernels are written in C++ and assembly. We then showed how Max unifies the entire thing and does holistic optimizations to unify everything, where you can do data processing in Mojo, the loop can be implemented as well in Mojo. Obviously, you could do gradual migration to that, so you don't have to like look at the entire thing. Uh, but what does this mean to performance? So we measured performance on this stable diffusion pipeline, and we're getting 2x speed up kind of across the board. This is massive. Again, if I tell you you can spend 50% less money on serving, <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd, you'd take that. Especially if it's like a, just a drop in replacement. All I'm doing, as you'll see in other presentations, is just change one flag. So to kind of summarize, what is Max? And what the kind of the core message of this presentation is? It's a world leading inference platform that unifies your entire stack and brings you massive compute multipliers across the board, across hardware, model types, data types in all dimensions. And with that, I want to open up for questions.